Welcome back to my channel. I'm Wayne, reminding and encouraging you to be the light. Helping myself and others to discuss the Bible and learn the truths on how to live this life in a way that God, well, maybe he'd approve of. Speaking of being the light, Matthew 5, verses 14 through 16 tells us, You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Friends, today we're going to discuss Matthew 24, verses 45 through 51, which is Jesus' parable of the faithful servant and the evil servant. Of course, we'll go through the parable itself, and then we'll talking about the meaning of the parable. We'll break down the four key subjects and the meanings of each of those. And we'll talk about how to apply the teaching of the parable and the good and evil servant to ourselves in our life today. So stay with me as we delve into the parable of the faithful and evil servant. Matthew 24, verses 45 through 51. The faithful servant and the evil servant. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his master made ruler over his household to give them food in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his master, when he comes, will find so doing. Assuredly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all his goods. But if that evil servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunkards, the master of the servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour that he is not aware of, and he will cut him in two, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what is the meaning of the parable of the faithful servant and the evil servant? This is one of several parables that Jesus told to teach moral and spiritual lessons to his disciples and followers. In this parable, Jesus uses the metaphor of a faithful and wise servant and an evil servant to illustrate important lessons about vigilance, responsibility, and accountability in the context of his second coming and the end times. Let's break down the four key subjects and the meanings in this parable. Subject number one, faithful and wise servant. The faithful and wise servant represents somebody who is entrusted with a responsibility or position of authority within a household or a community. This servant is diligent, responsible, and carries out their duties faithfully. The master rewards the servant with even greater responsibilities and blessings when he returns, symbolizing the rewards for faithful service in God's kingdom. In the book of Matthew, Jesus talks about many different stories, and in my next podcast, we're going to talk about the parable of the talents, which is in Matthew 24, verses 14 through 30, which he teaches us a very similar lesson, so check back next week for that teaching. Subject number two is the evil servant. The evil servant, on the other hand, represents somebody who becomes negligent and irresponsible when their master delays his return. Instead of fulfilling their duties and responsibilities, this servant starts mistreating their fellow servants and indulges in sinful behavior such as excessive eating and drinking with drunkards. This servant represents those who lose faith, become complacent, and fall into sinful ways. The third subject of this parable is about delayed return. The parable highlights the concept of the delay in the master's return signifying the uncertainty surrounding the timing of Jesus' second coming in Christian theology. The evil servant takes advantage of this perceived delay as an excuse for sinful behavior and negligence. If we jump ahead a few books in the Bible to Romans and go to Romans 6, that speaks of this question, that since we are saved by grace, can we sin and do as we please? Romans 6 verses 1 and 2 says, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. Romans 6 verses 12 through 13, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourself to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. And the fourth subject that this parable talks about is the consequence of negligence. When the master does return unexpectedly, he punishes the evil servant severely, cutting him in two and appointing him a portion with the hypocrites, which symbolizes a harsh judgment and exclusion from God's blessings. This also emphasizes the importance of being watchful, responsible, and faithful even in times of uncertainty. 
Overall, the parable encourages believers to remain faithful, vigilant, and responsible in their Christian walk, regardless of the apparent delay in Jesus' return. It warns against complacency, hypocrisy, and indulging in sinful behavior, emphasizing the need to always be prepared for the coming of the Lord and to fulfill one's responsibilities faithfully. So how can I apply the teaching of the parable of the good and evil servant in my life today? As we've mentioned earlier, this parable offers important moral and spiritual lessons that can be applied to your life today, regardless of your religious beliefs. Here's how you can apply the teachings from this parable to your life. On Responsibility and Diligence The faithful servant in the parable is praised for being responsible and diligent in carrying out his duties. Apply this lesson by taking your responsibilities seriously in your personal and professional life. Be diligent and committed to your tasks, whether it's at work, at home, or in your community. Do everything to the glory of God. On Accountability Recognize that you are accountable for your actions and behavior. The faithful servant understood that he would be held accountable by his master. In your life, take ownership of your decisions and their consequences. Strive to make choices that align with your values and principles. And when you make a bad choice or a decision, Own it, ask for forgiveness, learn from your mistakes, and strive to correct it. On avoiding complacency. The evil servant, on the other hand, in this parable, became complacent and indulged in sinful behavior because he believed his master's return would be delayed. Avoid complacency in your life. Continually strive for personal growth, moral integrity, and ethical behavior. Don't let the perception of a delay or a lack of immediate consequences lead you astray. Since we don't know the day or the time of Jesus' return, it's important not to put off till tomorrow what you know should be done today. On treating others with respect. The evil servant mistreated his fellow servants. Apply this lesson of treating others with respect and kindness. Promote a positive and supportive environment in your interactions with your friends, your family, your colleagues, and even strangers. Avoid harming others physically or emotionally. And when you sin or offend others, ask for their forgiveness and strive to do better next time by not repeating the offense. In other words, repent or turn from the bad behavior. On avoiding hypocrisy. The evil servant is referred to as a hypocrite in the parable. Avoid hypocrisy in your life by aligning your actions with your beliefs and values. Be genuine and sincere in your relationships and endeavors. Whatever you do, don't let your ego get in the way. Jesus had a lot to say about the scribes and the Pharisees in regard to being hypocrites. All you need to do is to read Matthew 23 verses 1 through 36 to hear Jesus let the religious leaders have a piece of his mind. Jesus warns both the scribes and the Pharisees at least seven times in this passage, Woe to you for these things that you do. He even called them serpents, a brood of vipers. On watchfulness and preparedness. The parable emphasizes the need to be watchful and prepared for the unexpected return of the master. In your life, cultivate a sense of preparedness by making informed decisions, setting goals, and having a plan for the future. Don't take the present for granted and be ready to adapt to changing circumstances. Be prepared for Jesus to return today, and if he doesn't, be prepared for him to return tomorrow. On self-reflection. It's a good idea to engage in self-reflection to assess your actions, your motives, and your character. Are you behaving like the faithful servant or the evil servant in various aspects of your life? Self-awareness can help you make positive changes and avoid negative behaviors. On humility. Embrace humility in your interactions and attitudes. The faithful servant in this parable is humble in his service. Recognize that you are not infallible and that you can learn from your mistakes. Be open to feedback and personal growth. And if you have an ego problem, be willing to understand why that might be and work to change it. If you're unsure if you have an ego problem, here's an easy thing you can do. Ask your spouse or your co-workers to be honest with you, and believe me, they'll let you know. On long-term perspective, the parable reminds us that the master will eventually return. In life, consider the long-term consequences of your actions and decisions, and think about how your choices today are going to impact your future and the lives of those around you. 
on seeking forgiveness and redemption. If you've come to recognize that you've behaved more like the evil servant in your past, well, don't despair. Seeking forgiveness and redemption is possible. Make amends for your actions and commit to positive change moving forward. Remember, the Bible tells us there is no condemnation in Christ. By applying these lessons from the parable of the good and evil servant, you can lead a more responsible, ethical, and fulfilling life, irrespective of your religious beliefs. These principles promote personal growth and contribute to a more compassionate and harmonious society. So here's a few reflective questions to ponder about the parable of the good and evil servant. The first question is on responsibility and accountability. How do I demonstrate responsibility and accountability in my daily life, and where can I improve? Our second reflective question is on the treatment of others. Am I consistently respectful and kind to others, or have there been times when I've mistreated them? How can I enhance my interactions with others in the future? Our third reflective question is on complacency and watchfulness. Have I ever become complacent or negligent in my duties due to a perceived delay in consequences? And how can I maintain a sense of watchfulness and preparedness in my life today? And finally, here's a reflective question about alignment with values. Do my actions align with my core values and beliefs, or do I sometimes exhibit hypocrisy? What steps can I take to ensure greater alignment between my beliefs and actions? I hope these questions will help you reflect on key aspects of the teaching and how it relates to your own life, enabling you to make positive changes and grow as a person. I also hope you've enjoyed this look at the parable of the good and evil servant and hope and pray that this message that Jesus was trying to relay resonates with you and perhaps even sparks a call to action in your relationship with God. So a suggestion that I have for you would be to reread Matthew 24 and 25. These chapters are packed with Jesus explaining that none of us know the day or the hour of his return and he tells us story after story about the importance of being spiritually ready for his return. For a deeper dive, check out my video on the parable of the ten virgins. You can find a link to that video in the description below. Compare both of the similar messages in these parables to truly unpack the warning that Jesus was teaching his followers. Remember that one day each of us will be present before the Lord and waiting to hear one of two things from him. Well done, good and faithful servant, or depart from me, I never knew you. Links to my podcast and social media, plus a full PDF transcript of this podcast will be included in the description below. And don't forget that God himself would love for you to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend that would benefit, and I'll be posting more very soon. God bless.